الله الرحمن الرحيم النهاردة إن شاء الله هنبدأ بالفيمورا الأرطر قبل ما نشتغل في مورا الأرطري لازم الأول نشوف البلفس فلو جينا مع بعض كده نرسم البلفس هنقول ده السكرم anterior view والسكرم ده anterior view هيبان لي الإيلة of سكرم وال anterior sacral فورامينا وهنا مثلا الأوت لاين of coccyx وهنلاقي الهيب بون العظمة اللي اسمها إليم الإليم ده لو إليك كريست عنده anterior superior إليك سباين إسكال سباين بيوبس anterior inferior إليك سباين إسكيم أوت لاين of acetabulum وهنا ال anterior inferior إليك سباين في هنا الفورامين اللي اسمها اوبتيوريتور فورامين وعندي الاوت لاين اوف ذا فيمر نيك اوف فيمر بارت اوف ذا هيد نيك اوف فيمر جريتر تروكانتر اند لسر تروكانتر ذا فيمر ديسنت ميديال كوندايل اوف فيمر انتر كوندايلر نوتش لاترال كوندايل اوف ذا فيمر هير ذا شافت اوف ذا فيمر اوكي Then upper end of tibia, medial condyle, lateral condyle, and the lateral condyle articulate with the upper end of the fibula. Here the tibial tube rusty, medial surface of the tibia, lateral surface of the tibia. Knee joint. When speaking about the femoral artery, you should revise or memorize the anatomy of the medial aspect of the thigh. Adductor compartment. On the adductor compartment, we have the ad, uh, muscle called pectineus. The pectineus. Beside the pectineus, there is adductor longus. This is the adductor longus. And behind the adductor longus, it appears part of the muscle called adductor brevis here. And All the background, we can see the adductor magnus muscle. This adductor magnus is the largest muscle in the adductor compartment. Consists of two parts. Part called ischial part, insert in the adductor tubercle. And part called pubic part, insert behind the femur. Here, from our previous study, a tubercle called pubic tubercle. And a ligament, this ligament is called inguinal ligament. This inguinal ligament comes from the anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle. It is the lower border of external oblique apneurosis. A muscle called sartorius comes from here. The sartorius comes from the anterior superior iliac spine to the upper part of the medial surface of the tibia. The sartorius with the adductor longus form a triangle called femoral triangle. This is the outline of sartorius. Here, the outline of the triangle called femoral triangle. Again, this is the inguinal ligament, pectineus, adductor longus, sartorius, medial border of adductor longus. This is what's called femoral triangle. Deep or behind the sartorius here, there is a canal called adductor canal or subsartorial canal. The femoral artery is the continuation of the external iliac artery. Beginning femoral artery, the continuation of external iliac artery. Where as it pass deep to or behind the inguinal ligament. At which point? Here we should identify two points. The first point is called mid inguinal point and this point is the midway between the anterior superior iliac spine and the symphysis pubes. This is the mid 
inguinal point. Another point is called midpoint of inguinal ligament. This is the midway between the pubic tubercle and the anterior superior iliac spine. This is the midpoint of inguinal ligament. So, the femoral artery is the continuation of external iliac artery as it passes deep to inguinal ligament at the mid inguinal point. The femoral artery travels into two spaces. The first part of the femoral artery runs through the femoral triangle. The second part runs through the adductor canal or the subsartorial canal. So, when speaking about the course of the femoral artery, we can say that the femoral artery, the upper part, run in the femoral triangle and the lower part run in the adductor canal or the subsartorial canal. The femoral artery leaves the subsartorial canal by passing through the, femo the opening of the adductor magnus or the adductor hiatus where it terminates. Terminate by passing behind the knee joint continue as popliteal artery. So, memorize or summarize the femoral artery is the direct continuation of external iliac artery deep to inguinal ligament where at the mid inguinal point what is the mid inguinal point? The midway between anterior superior iliac spine and symphysis pubis course the femoral artery upper part run in the femoral triangle, the lower part run in the adductor canal or subsartorial canal. Here, you should know that this femoral artery is lateral to the femoral vein. So, when I draw the femoral vein, the femoral vein is medial to the femoral artery. Again, the femoral vein is medial and the femoral artery is lateral. Both surrounded by a sheath. This sheath is called femoral sheath. Again, the upper part of the femoral artery and the upper part of the femoral vein surrounded by the femoral sheath. And the femoral sheath has three compartments. The medial most part of the femoral sheath is called femoral canal. The intermediate part of the femoral sheath contain the femoral vein. The lateral part of the femoral sheath contain the femoral artery and femoral branch of the genitofemoral nerve. So, femoral artery the last time. This femoral artery is the continuation of the external iliac artery deep to inguinal ligament at the mid inguinal point. The femoral artery run in the femoral triangle and its lower part in the adductor canal or subsartorial canal. The uppermost part of the femoral artery with the uppermost part of the femoral vein enclosed within the femoral cheese. What about the medial most part of the femoral cheese? It's called the femoral canal. Again, if we try to say or speak about the branches of the femoral artery, draw again and memorize. Here in this picture, you should know or notice that, that the femoral artery runs superficial to the adductor longus muscle. Again, Femoral artery run superficial to the muscle called adductor longus. In this drawing, we draw the sacrum, hip bone, anterior superior iliac spine, anterior inferior iliac spine, obturator foramen, outer margin or outline of the uh, acetabulum, greater trochanter, lesser trochanter, and this is the femur. The femur terminates medial condyle of femur and lateral condyle of the femur. 
The medial condyle of the femur and lateral condyle of the femur articulates with the condyles of the tibia at the knee joint. And the lateral condyle of the tibia articulates with the fibula at the superior tibiofibular joint. Here, the greater trochanter and the lesser trochanter. This is the symphysis pubis. And here, the ligament called inguinal ligament coming from the anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle. This is our outline. And you should memorize that this ligament is the lower border of external oblique aponeurosis. This is the external oblique aponeurosis. And the external oblique aponeurosis has a ring. This ring is called superficial inguinal ring. Here, we removed the muscles, adductor longus and the ATC. And we should see the muscle called adductor magnus. This is adductor magnus, has two parts, pubic part, here is the pubic part, and ischial part. The ischial part of the adductor magnus and the pubic part of adductor magnus has an opening in between. This opening is called the opening of adductor magnus or adductor hiatus. Okay, what is our femoral artery? Our femoral artery is here. This is the femoral artery. The direct continuation of the external iliac artery travels in the femoral triangle, upper part, and the lower part travels in the adductor canal or subsartorial canal. The lower part of the femoral artery leaves the adductor canal or the subsartorial canal by passing through the opening of adductor magnus or the adductor hiatus. Here, the femoral artery. This femoral artery gives branches. The first set of branches arise from the femoral artery just below the inguinal ligament. These three branches are called superficial inguinal arteries. What is a superficial inguinal arteries? This superficial inguinal arteries goes to the skin of the anterior abdominal wall and the skin of the external genitalia. You should memorize that if we draw here the external genital organs, I can draw in males a cord called spermatic cord or in females a ligament called the round ligament of uterus. Coming through the superficial inguinal end, yes. This first branch comes from the femoral artery just below the inguinal ligament and it travels superficially, piercing the cribriform fascia, goes to the anterior superior iliac spine. This artery is called superficial circumflex iliac. This is the superficial circumflex iliac artery. The second one comes from the femoral artery, piercing the fascia, being superficial, and it travels to the anterior abdominal wall. This artery supply the lower part of the anterior abdominal wall, skin of the lower part of the anterior abdominal wall, and called superficial epigastric. The last one of the superficial arteries goes to the skin of the external genitalia, superficial to the spermatic cord or round the ligament. This artery is called superficial external pudendal artery. So, the first set of branches of the femoral artery is the superficial inguinal arteries. This superficial inguinal arteries, number one, superficial circumflex iliac, number two, superficial epigastric, number three, superficial external pudendal. The three superficial arteries supply skin of the anterior abdominal wall and external genitalia. Here, below this set of arteries, I have a second artery. This artery is called deep external pudendal. So the femoral artery supplies the external genitalia, skin of the external genitalia mostly, by two branches. The first branch is the superficial external pudendal. The second branch is the deep external pudendal artery. The most important branch of the femoral artery comes from the posterior lateral side of the femoral artery and travel with him 
This artery is called profunda femoris artery. Why is he called it profunda femoris? This profunda femoris runs deep to adductor longus. So I mentioned to you that the femoral artery is superficial to the adductor longus. And this profunda is deep to adductor longus. So the femoral artery and its main branch, profunda femoris or deep femoral artery, separated by the adductor longus. This, all of these branches of the femoral artery arise from the femoral artery inside the femoral triangle. The last branch of the femoral artery comes from the femoral artery in the adductor canal. This artery travels down to the knee joint. This artery is called descending genicular artery. So, the femoral artery in brief. The femoral artery is a direct continuation of the external iliac artery. Enter the lower limb deep to the inguinal ligament at the mid inguinal point. Run in the femoral triangle and in the subsartorial canal. In the femoral triangle, the uppermost part of the femoral artery is surrounded by femoral cheese. It leaves the, femor the adductor canal at the opening of adductor magnus. Here it terminates by becoming the popliteal artery. So, beginning the continuation of external iliac, deep to inguinal ligament again. Termination, pass through the opening of adductor magnus or adductor hiatus, continue as popliteal artery. Course, the upper part in the femoral triangle, the lower part in the adductor canal or subsartorial canal, the uppermost part surrounded by femoral cheese. Branches, first set of branches, superficial inguinal arteries, superficial circumflex iliac, superficial epigastric, superficial external pudendal, the three branches superficial inguinal. The second one is the deep external pudendal, and the last one in the femoral triangle is the profunda femoris artery or deep femoral. In the adductor canal or the subsartorial canal, it gives the descending genicular artery or descending genicular branch. The last item here is the position of the femoral nerve. This is the femoral nerve coming from the lumbar plexus, the thins in the lower limb deep to inguinal ligament, lateral and outside the femoral cheese. So the femoral artery is lateral to femoral vein, medial to femoral nerve, and note that this femoral nerve is outside the femoral sheath. This is the termination or the end of the femoral artery.